Hey, welcome back everybody. It's time to get out of Italy and take a look at the Northern High Renaissance. So what we're going to do is just jump out of Northern Italy into a part of what we now call present day Germany, Southern Germany, to a little town called Eisenheim. And it's there we're going to meet a very kind of remarkable altarpiece. Um, this is a period of time where a lot of the um, continued narratives, religious themes, um, continue in art history in the North. Um, what follows the creation of this altarpiece will kind of um, rock Europe to some ex uh, to a great extent with the Protestant Reformation. I'll get into a little bit of that later. Um, where there is essentially going to be a religious divorce that's going to change artistic expression. This will pr particularly be significant when we get into Baroque art in the 17th century. But uh, without further ado, let's move on to our PowerPoints here and take a look at this slideshow. Um, all right, what you can see here are a couple of visitors. Um, taking a look at this altarpiece. It is complex. It is multi-layered. Um, they've actually broken it up into its constituent parts, I think, for the modern day um, art appreciation visit to see all of the aspects of this uh, masterpiece. Let me move on to the title slide here and the name of our artist. I'm just going to make myself disappear for a little bit. Uh, so that you can read the, all of the detail in my PowerPoint. All right, here we go here. Uh, the artist, um, his name is Grunewald. Grunewald, and the title of this altarpiece is the Eisenheim Altarpiece. It was created for a chapel. Um, inside of a hospital. Those of you who've been in hospitals um, may have noticed or may have um, used uh, the hospital chapels. Um, and the hospital in Eisenheim, Germany, um, which then was part of the Holy Roman Empire, but just for uh, convenience sake, we'll, we'll call it Germany, um, uh, was called the Hospital of St. Anthony. The years of execution, um, circa 1510 to 1515. So again, this is an example of Northern High Renaissance art, um, German Northern High Renaissance art. Um, when, you, when you see this um, large scale altarpiece, um, what you find is that just the center panel alone, featuring a traditional scene of a crucifixion of Christ, uh, measures about 10 feet in high by about approximately 11 feet. Um, and I'm rounding off those numbers just to make it um, easy and to picture in your mind's eye. Um, what you uh, find also is that it seems to have a triptych format, right? We see the center panel, we see um, wings or side panels um, that depict two saints. Down below, that's called a predella, and that just depicts a um, um, either a lamentation or entombment scene. We're not going to focus on that. Let's take our attention to the two side panels. On the left hand side, that is a popular saint by the name of Saint Sebastian. Um, he was really popular during uh, the plague, particularly. And for those who suffered, you know, from this terrible disease, this uh, kind of European pandemic. Um, of the plague, um, you know, sometimes you had manifestations on your skin, uh, pox or boils, that kind of thing. And so the idea is what happened to Saint Sebastian when he was um, executed for his beliefs or being a, an early Christian, right? He was, as you might see, he was pummeled with arrows. Uh, that's how he was executed. And so the idea of arrows making holes in the body is sort of analogous to the wounds or pox, you know, created by disease like the plague. So during the plague, he would be a popular saint that people would pray to because they, he could, uh, in their mind's eye, they believe that he could relate to their suffering. 
On the other side is the namesake of the hospital, St. Anthony. And we're not seeing him in any kind of uh, torment at this point, but there is a panel that does show that he understands suffering as well. So, you know, we know that this, this is what happens in, in hospitals, and it's part of one of the themes of the entire altarpiece is disease and suffering. Um, but the other theme is healing and salvation. So disease and suffering, healing and salvation, these are the themes associated with uh, the Eisenheim altarpiece. Now, can you see this faint line running down the middle of this center panel? Well, before we talk about what we see here, let's see what that leads to because it's an opening and those two halves open up to reveal more art. So let's take a look what might be for us to see. And it's here you might find additional panels um, that talk about St. Anthony himself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the left-hand side. And the theme of those that panel is the temptation of St. Anthony. Um, the idea is that St. Anthony and his story um, went on a pilgrimage, um, essentially to the desert, not like Joshua Tree or Death Valley, but like a biblical desert. It was an experience of, of deprivation and hardship. And supposedly the devil sent in all kinds of temptations and torment uh, to poor St. Anthony. And so in the very fertile imagination of Grunewald, he's created all kinds of monsters and beasts who are pulling poor St. Anthony's hair or biting his hands and legs, clawing, reaching. And you can see, um, you know, St. Anthony with his very recognizable fluffy cotton candy beard there, um, wailing, um, tormented, suffering. Um, on the right, I've given you a little kind of detail shot just to show you these myriad of beasts and monsters, which look really, I mean, to the modern eye, look more like the stuff out of our childhood um, books. It reminds me so much of Maurice, Maurice Sendak's Where the Wild Things Are. Um, that was sort of the uh, book we all fought over to check out at the library when I was a kid. But, you know, monsters that um, are a little you know, mon monstrous, you know, they have sharp claws and beaks and big teeth, but at the same time, they kind of have runny noses and buck teeth. And, you know, it's, they're almost um, seemingly to the modern eye, a little bit um, um, less malevolent and scary than um, what we would come up with nowadays. But you have to keep in mind, just like Michelangelo's depictions of the demons on his back altar wall at the Sistine Chapel, so too the you know the 16th century viewer of these kinds of monsters would be you know quite disturbed by them. This is the stuff of nightmares back in the day. Um, what is even what is disturbing, I think, to the modern viewer is what you find on the bottom hand left-hand side of this interior panel. And it's here you see kind of a human-like figure, um, just clothed in kind of a, a hooded vest, um, complexion very off, right? It's kind of a gray-green complexion, a sickly complexion. Um, what you find um, also is the body, you know, the, the stomach distension of disease, um, wounds on the flesh of disease, you know, more of those pox and other men, unmentionables. I'm not going to get into too much detail. Head thrown back in agony. This, you have to, you know, again, the viewer of this piece might be a patient in this hospital, hospital and may see themselves reflected in that individual in an otherwise kind of fantastical scene of the suffering of, of uh, St. Anthony. Of course, that gives uh, St. Anthony some credibility that he understands suffering. 
Uh, he understands torment, just like a disease would inflict that, inflict that on a human being. Uh, but the real torment, kind of the real kind of relatability and um, um, shock for the viewer even today would be this individual here. That's some kind of gritty realism. But when you think about Eyes um, Grunewald, uh, Grunewald um, being aware of this hospital, being aware of what is treated in the hospital, not only victims of the plague, which was kind of coming and going um, in the days before antibiotics, right? Um, but there was another disease called St. Anthony's Fire, uh, where people were consuming a toxin that grew on uh, the grain rye. So I know, don't worry, it's safe to still to eat your pastrami on rye sandwich or your tuna on rye. But in those days, something was um, attaching itself, some kind of a mold or fungus on the grain, and it was a slowly... Uh, consume toxin and people didn't understand what was wrong and so they were becoming deathly ill and sometimes dying from this disease nicknamed St. Anthony's Fire um, and that was the specialty of this hospital um, as one of the diseases that was treated there. All right continuing to examine some of the features of the Eisenheim altarpiece let's go ahead and pay attention to that crucifixion scene here. What I want you to see here is because of that realism, the, the um, you know the what happens to the human body when it's when it's damaged. Um, this is something um, Grunewald is not shy about showing. We have Mary, we have Saint John, John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene uh, grieving the crucifixion of Jesus. We even have a little lamb here holding. Um, a crucifix kind of, you know, symbol, symbol, symbolizing the sacrificial lamb or Jesus himself. But Jesus, wow, look at the twist of his arms, like they've been dislocated, the attenuation of the fingers. I mean, that is some serious suffering. Um, taking a closer look at the waist, you can see this tapering of the waist. Um, um, as if Grunewald is depicting the struggle of Jesus when he was still alive to even breathe and gasp for air. Apparently it's very difficult to breathe while you're crucified. So all of the re gritty reality, um, he does not shy away from the crown of thorns, the abuse on the flesh, the thorns, the scratches, the stab wounds, the bruising, feet. I mean, no just stigmata. We see those nasty spikes that have been driven through Christ's hands and feet and what it would just do to destroy tissue and bone and tendon and all of that. So no doubt there is disease and suffering going on, but additional panels reveal sort of earlier times, the Annunciation when Mary became pregnant, um, the happy early days of the young mother and child. And finally, we're going to look at this piece here. And this panel is where healing and salvation is depicted because this is the panel that describes Christ resurrected. It's an interesting nocturnal scene of Jesus in a nighttime starry sky with this beautiful um, you know, orb of heavenly divine light behind him. He is showing his stigmata in case you can't quite recognize what, who he is because he seems to have gotten a makeover. No more wounds of the flesh blonde hair now, um, but he has risen from his tomb um, and has been resurrected. So all in all, you find saints, you have themes for those who are suffering in the hospital um, that are relatable, saints who understand suffering, um, but also messages of healing and salvation that maybe you can you know, survive something as terrible as St. Anthony's fire, that terrible disease, or maybe that there is healing um, and salvation in the great beyond um, if uh, you reach the heavenly gates. All right, so that is the gritty reality that um, uh, Grunewald is not shy about depicting in the Eisenheim altarpiece. Um, a complex, multi-layered altarpiece, and I'll attach a little YouTube video that shows how the whole thing opens up. Um, it's quite remarkable. All right, that's it. Catch you later.